Hello there. So, in this video, we're going to kind of keep extending what we've been doing in recent videos. I actually have a diagram for this one though. But we've been using a lot of NPN transistors in some circuits and PNP transistors in other circuits. And setting up the power supply this way, using an op amp, this is a 741 op amp, we will be able to split the power so from the uh, bench power supply so that we have a 0 volt reference point and then 9 volts positive and 9 volts negative in relationship to that 0 volt reference point. So all circuits will end their journey at the 0 volt reference point. They'll either begin at more positive, so conventional current if you want to think of it that way, or from the negative, electron flow, if you want to think of it that way. So the circuit itself is pretty simple. We already have the op amp on the board and usually there's a triangle symbol, usually the part number on there, so 741 in this case and uh, you may even see the pins labeled but uh, I didn't do that so we have the output there and to begin with let's power it so one of the power pins has to go to the positive side of the power supply the other to the negative it does matter which one so I made a uh, pin layout right here for the 741 op amp and so it's pretty straightforward the negative one is that uh, pin number four you can see down there now these may not be marked down on the uh, schematic you may not see the power pins at all and that helps save space but you should be aware of course that you have to power this you always have to power it it needs power from the rail to do its thing so there you go pin number seven over there is the positive side of the power supply and if you haven't worked with integrated circuits, dual inline package, they're these black ones that fit onto the board pretty nicely. You may have to squeeze the leads in a little bit for them to uh, line up, but uh, that's no big deal. Then they plug right in and they stay in really well. So there's one or both of these divots there, and then you move to the left, pin number one on top, two, three, four, work your way down. If it's longer, you keep working your way down. But once you get to the bottom, you jump across, so jump across, five, six, seven, eight, four, and eight pin dual inline package. So now, the op amp, we set a voltage at the non-inverting pin with two resistors. In this case, we want to go halfway. They have to be equal value. They do not have to be 100,000 ohms, but we really don't need any current. We only need the voltage. So if we put 100,000 to the positive rail and 100,000 to the negative rail, that will be halfway resistance wise to the non-inverting pin right there. So we'll get half of the power supply voltage, which will end up being the voltage that the transistor will try to hold at the output there. So you can see pin six is the output. So non-inverting input is pin number three. Usually you see plus and minus more than non-inverting input for plus and inverting input for negative. So you may hear plus pin or negative pin or plus input, negative input. But in any case, we want to get half of the power supply voltage, so we will put a 100,000 ohm resistor. Again, you could use 10 kilo ohms, doesn't matter the uh, value, just so long as they pass enough current through them that it can detect the voltage. So you don't need much though, but half the resistance to the positive rail, half the resistance to the negative rail. So now this uses feedback. The output doesn't just automatically output the voltage that we have at the non-inverting input. It compares the voltage from the inverting input and the non-inverting input and it tries to make the voltage closer to what the non-inverting input is than the inverting input. So we will use this jumper I made for 555 timers but it's actually the same two pins I have to jump the gap with there so it's perfectly perfectly linked to go over. We could also bend one down, a longer one, and move it across the top if you don't want to cover the op amp. Or you could use like three moving your way around. But uh, I like this. Just snap this over here. Especially for these prototype circuits. So that will give the feedback. So the voltage of the output is going to change naturally. It's going to come to the non-inverting input. If it's a little bit higher, then what we have said at the non-inverting input, it lowers the voltage. 
if it's a little lower voltage it raises the voltage so it tries to keep the voltage since we have feedback coming to the non or to the inverting pin it keeps the voltage steady at that point there and you may need some capacitors to help out too or whatnot but uh, for my circuits I've been fine so far without any stabilizer capacitors now we're gonna put this jumper here to extend our output and gonna grab the multimeter now because we are done so okay power supply is already on I thought it was off but uh, it is on we have 18 volts at the rail as you can see here and so now ground is here so we can get current to easily flow from the positive rail over to here the more negative side of the positive rail zero volt reference point and then go to the op amp no problem just like that and we go over here and we see it's a negative voltage so negative nine volts half of the power supply voltage so if you want to think of electron flow electrons can flow out here and then flow into the uh, output of the op amp so it can either source current which is it is the source when it goes to the negative rail or it can sink current which it is sinking current when it comes from the positive rail so it can do both it's going to hold at zero volts here pretty well and then there'll be circuits parts of the circuits I should say usually that come from the positive side of the power supply and then some from the negative side of the power supply so it splits the power supply pretty nicely and that's all we have to do we can build other circuits that take advantage of this now as a split power supply as if it doesn't exist all we have to know is that we have a zero volt reference point a positive 9 volts and a negative 9 volts so in any case hopefully this video helped and uh, I've been doing videos with the PNP transistor where we just went from the negative power rail to the positive power rail which was no big deal and, uh, and then we did NPN transistor videos where we went from the positive rail to the negative rail again no big deal but uh, to make circuits with both of them it's really good to have a zero volt reference point where half of the voltage comes from the positive side of the power supply and then half the voltage comes from the negative side of the power supply and all of their journeys end at the same point and so that is why this circuit's going to be so important for future videos and even videos I did in the past so thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video